Hey everybody, so um, I made a video a while back titled, What is Luciferianism? And in that video, I kind of made reference to, you know, what kind of stuff do you think these people have around their house? Um, and how it's not Torah stuff, it's not stuff about the Talmud, um, it's it, weird Egyptian stuff. This book I found when I was cleaning up my house. And it was actually given to me by some of the very people that I was making reference to. These people had all kinds of weird Egyptian shit all over their house. But they also had weird Hebrew shit all over their house. But it's not religious Jewish stuff. So I wanted to just take a peek at this book with you guys before I throw it away. Um, after you get past the forward here... Um, Oh yeah, this is the rarest of occult manuscripts. So there's a few things I want to point out to you guys with regards to, well, first, Luciferianism, as you can see, as you're going to see from this book, it's very schizophrenic. It's very scattered. So the first thing you're going to notice here as we get through the book, okay, okay, right, um, you've got Hebrew writing. But you've also got this weird scribbly shit that doesn't look like anything. And by the way, yeah, here's a woman basically slicing a guy's throat over a bowl. Whatever. Uh, but there's something very interesting you're going to notice here. Okay, first of all, look at this. What the hell kind of writing is that? Is that Egyptian writing? This guy was supposed to be in tune with the Egyptian mysteries, right? But what is his, what is his, what is his, um, what is his connection with this Egyptian mysteries? Oh, what kind of Egyptian writing is this? Right? Now this stuff, this is this stuff you see all over these, um, manuscripts from the, mid, from the, not the, not even the Middle Ages. They're saying Middle Ages is probably not even that old. Um, I've studied a lot of alchemy stuff back in the day look at this what do you see here not just okay look how schizophrenic this is first you have hebrew this is a real hebrew alphabet but again where do you actually find the hebrew alphabet in history you guys you don't actually find it in the middle east you find it in books like this that are from europe okay so not only do you have hebrew writing we've got i mean what the fuck is going on here fake egyptian and then, not only fake Egyptian, fake Arabic. Now, we're going to keep going because there's uh, there's actually a lot, lot to go through here. More fake Arabic. Why Arabic? Why fake Arabic? Okay. Now, think about this, you guys. These are the same people who created these alphabets. We don't know. Maybe they created this alphabet. I doubt it. But that's what David Ewing Jr. will tell you. Anyway, um, oh yeah, look how schizophrenic this is. This is from the same book somewhere they're claiming, and it's this book is all fake Arabic, Hebrew, Greek, and then now this is the only actual alphabet here. Maybe this one too, I guess. I don't Athenor. Um, okay, so anyway, the this is where you find Hebrew writing. You don't find it in the Middle East. You find it in these books but again remember something you guys this guy is supposed to be in touch with the egyptian mysteries so what did egyptian writing look like well guess what at the time of this in the 17 and 1800s they hadn't even decided what egyptian writing looked like yet they hadn't even finalized egyptian writing so you end up with all these bizarre kind of scribbly things we haven't even gotten to it yet this is uh now, I'm sure if you actually examined the, uh, you know, contents of this book, you'd find some crazy shit. Of course, by the way, not only <laughs> not only is it in uh, bizarrely in, you know, uh, Hebrew and fake Arabic, oh, but the book is in French, by the way. These are all the elite languages, okay? And this is the same type of imagery you see on every alchemical book ever. This is what this is the bread and butter of Hermeticism right here. But we haven't even gotten to the good part yet. Look, 
let's let's keep going here okay first of all look at this not only fake arabic fake sumerian cuneiform that's totally fucking fake by the way that's not real cuneiform but you know why? It's because these are the same people that fucking made it up to begin with. These are literally the same fucking people. We haven't even gotten to the good shit yet. Okay. Again, what the hell kind of Egyptian is that? That's so fucking fake. This is some really fake looking Arabic too. They couldn't even get that right. But maybe they did that on purpose. But again, more fake Arabic. I'm just waiting to get to the, uh, okay, more and more and more, okay, okay, here we go, this is the kind of shit, now, is this from the Torah, is this from the Talmud, looks like it's not, but look at this writing on the side, it's fucking scribbles, look at this, this is Egyptian writing, my name is Count St. Germain. Uh, this is the Holy Egyptian writing. This is the Dimerald Tablets of Thoth. This is the Atlantean language. Look how fucking fake this looks, you guys. This is because at this time, in the 1700s, they hadn't even decided what Egyptian writing looked like yet. They were fucking still making it up at that time. Okay? Now, look. More. This is Egyptian writing, you guys. Trust me. I'm I'm in touch with the ancient spirits. This is the Egyptian writing. Okay. So again, isn't this a little weird you guys that in the in the 1700s or whenever the fuck this guy was, nobody was nobody was like 100% on what on what fucking hieroglyphs even looked like yet? Isn't that kind of strange? And then not only that, these same books have Weird Arabic, fake Arabic, and Hebrew writing all over them. The only real script here is the Hebrew. That's the only, like, actually consistent script. And again, I've said it six times. These manuscripts, this is the only place you find this Hebrew writing. Europe. European occult manuscripts. Right? And you often found it next to fucking gibberish like this. Enochian. Okay, so just wanted you guys to just wanted you guys to take a look at this with me before I got rid of it because um, not only should this give you an idea of how schizophrenic um, Luciferianism is and was, it's not only at its beginning but even in the present day. And by the way, if you're looking to you know things like this for truth, how like fucked you are really? You're not gonna find any goddamn truth in here. This is all fucking psycho babble and just fucking satanic bullshit you know it's fucking garbage but anyway guys thanks for watching hope everyone has a good one by the way um if you're doubting that this guy is uh involved in luciferianism it's right here you know you have to get me to copy the vatican manuscript of the kabbalah a work of extraordinary profundity setting forth the doctrines of the Luciferians. Just him. Actually, there's all kinds of uh, insane claims here. For one thing, of course, these people writing this book, which, by the way, this book, they, like, started a church where they would go and, like, teach this shit to people. Uh, believe it or not, but, yeah. He's got the staff of Moses presented it to him at Babylon, and then listen to this. Where is it? Listen to this. Presently, his whole being became reunited. He made a movement with his hand, so he'll departure. I am leaving. Do not visit me. Tomorrow night I am off. I am much needed in Constantinople. Then in England, there to prepare two inventions, which you will have in the next century. Trains and steamboats. Oh my God. Thank you, St. Germain. Thank you, St. Germain, for inventing the steamboat. Yeah, by the way, um, it says here he knew Sanskrit and Chinese. Um, remember, this is at a time when uh, 
these languages actually probably didn't even exist in the 1700s. Um, so, you know, whoever wrote this book, uh, I guess that would be uh, Manly P. Hall again, familiar name. I uh, really thought really highly of this guy. Um, but yeah, it's worth uh, asking if this guy even existed for sure. But, um, you know, it kind of just looks like they, uh, you know, created this character. This is like a guy just like a, what's that other guy they said became immortal? Francis Bacon or some shit. Anyway. His skill as a chemist was so profound that he could remove flaws from diamonds and emeralds. Holy shit. Can you imagine? What a larger than life character. Yep. Oh my gosh, you guys. There are too many authentic cases of metallic transmutations to condemn him as a charlatan. Yeah. So just, this is Luciferianism for you. You have made up characters, made up fucking languages. Main thing I wanted to point out to you guys is that, uh, yeah, in the 1700s, uh, even the elite people had no fucking idea what they wanted. They weren't, they, they just weren't, they weren't like set on what ancient Egyptian looked like. That's the main thing. Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. So one thing I wanted to tack on to the video again, this isn't as much about occulted, I mean it is, but basically there's uh, some guy, he made a short little video I just watched about, like I didn't think about this, right, like Saint Germain and George Washington were officially contemporaries, like they lived in the same time period, and he's all like, oh yeah, they were the same person. Well, that's a, that would be really big if true, because they're both uh, Freemasons, after all. And uh, it's pretty funny that, you know, at least um, there are accounts, people claiming that, some, you know, basically St. Germain was in New Orleans, fucking, and he's a vampire. And that, that, um, that might be a whole other deep dive topic, is just the character of St. Germain. But anyway, I just wanted to tack that on there. Thanks, guys.